Welcome to episode six of Behind the Hymn. First, a little background. On May 19th, 1662, the Parliament of England made into law the Act of Uniformity. This act required all ministers within the British Isles to adhere completely to the Book of Common Prayer. All ministers had to follow the same prescribed form of public prayers, administration of the sacraments, and all other rites of the established Church of England, also known as the Anglican Church, or here in the U.S., the Episcopal Church. As a result of this act, more than 2,000 clergymen refused to, to take the oath to adhere to the Act of Uniformity. Immediately, they were expelled from the Church of England. Those who refused to adhere to the Act of Uniformity were known as nonconformists or dissenters. And here I have the Act of Uniformity here in my book here, the Book of Common Prayer from the years of 1549, 1559, and 1662. And I have the, the whole Act, which is several pages on what you could do as a minister within the Church of England. Those who refused to adhere to the Act of Uniformity were known as nonconformists or dissenters. These nonconformists or dissenters eventually formed their own denominations, the most famous being the Puritans or the Congregationalists. Other nonconformists were known as the Methodists, Baptists, Unitarians, Quakers, and the Plymouth Brethren. One of the most influential nonconformist ministers was Isaac Watts. Isaac Watts Jr. was born on July 17, 1674, in Southampton, England. His father, Isaac Watts Sr., was a clother who was imprisoned three times for nonconforming to the Church of England. The younger Watts learned Latin, Greek, French, and Hebrew, but he declined a charitable offer for university education which would have required conformity to the Church of England. Instead, he attended a descending academy run by Thomas Rowe in Little Britain, London, from 1690 to 1694. Upon graduating in 1694, he did not enter the ministry at first. Instead, he entered seclusion at his father's house in Southampton where for two years he composed poetry and hymnody and continued his studies. After serving briefly as a tutor, he entered the ministry, serving as an assistant to Isaac Chauncey, the famous independent church at Mark Lane, London. Here, Watts was called as minister in 1702, after Chauncey resigned bringing new life to what was a declining church and moving the church to Bury Street in 1708, where it became an important evangelical voice for dissent. From his early years as an assistant pastor, Watts was hindered in his ministry by ill health that required frequent leaves of absence for recuperation. Then from September 1712 to October 1716, he suffered an illness that completely incapacitated him. During this time, he dedicated himself to writing and to what he could do in his pastoral duties. Isaac Watts is best remembered for his hymnody, but he was also prolific and a well-respected author in education, philosophy, and theology. He spent the majority of his ministry composing works ranging from sermons and catechetical resources for parents, to formal studies in philosophy and education, to theological works directed to a variety of audiences, some being studied among students studying for the ministry in the dissenting tradition. After the Glorious Revolution in 1688, in the Act of Toleration in 1689, some felt that the tradition of dissent would dissipate. 
arguing that it had been driven less by doctrine and more by the personalities and those of those persecuted under the laws of conformity. Others watched as dissent fragmented into rationalistic and evangelical strands. In his work, Watts offered a theological foundation for the dissenting tradition. He assumed a mediating position, anchored in reason, but attended to the experiences of faith, even while he reached out to other traditions, employing rational inquiry for the sake of theological conversation and defense of the Christian faith. Watts's early hymnody was sung from manuscript at Southampton Chapel before it was being published. Seeing the popularity of his hymns, he published Hymns and Spiritual Songs in three volumes in 1707, and he enlarged his hymnal in 1709. His hymns are paraphrases of scriptural texts, general subjects of divinity, and about the Lord's Supper. He later published two more hymnals, first in 1715 called Divine Songs, and in 1719 called The Psalms of David, imitated in the language of the New Testament. Throughout his hymns, he intentionally avoided controversial teachings as he wanted to unify the church at a time when religion itself was fractured. Isaac Watts died on November 25th, 1748, in London, England. Some of Watts' most familiar hymns include Joy to the World, LSB 387, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, LSB 425, and LSB 426, and Not All the Blood of Beasts, LSB 431.